Okay. Good morning. My name is David Crossan. I'm an equal opportunity or equal employment opportunity specialist with the Anderson Army Depot in Anderson, Alabama. Today we're here to talk to you about USA jobs and federal resumes. We're planning for a federal career with the US government. Um, any questions? I know you're a freshman. Alumni? Alumni? Are you a student or alumni? Yes. Okay, so you're a staff member. Okay. A um, little history about myself. I'm a retired Army veteran. I've been working at Anderson Army Depot since July of this year in the Equal Employment, or Equal Employment Opportunity Office. Um, I have about six years or about four years experience as Equal Opportunity, so this is not something new. And with USA Jobs, I just got hired, so I have some pretty good experiences and some things that I used that helped me with my process here. First things first, talk to you a little bit about Anderson Army Depot for those who want to know. We have about 3,500 employees on the depot. Out of that 3,500, 25 are military. So the other 3,475 are civilian employees. So a good number for anybody out here looking for a job, go down there and get you one. Our job is we rebuild combat vehicles, M1 Abrams all the way down to uh, M113 and small arms, 50 cal all the way down to an M9 pistol. And we cover like here the Equal Employment Opportunity Acts, Title VII, Equal Pay, Age Discrimination, Rehabilitation. So we do not discriminate. If you have a disability, it's not a discriminatory fact. You can be hired with disabilities or even age. Objectives, we're going to talk about the application process, getting into federal employment, searching for jobs, building resumes, how to apply, and I'll take you into USA Jobs going through my account. So you can actually see live how it does work a little bit. Introduced to major career fields at Anderson Army Depot. The career fields at Anderson Army Depot range from administrators all the way to mechanics, welders, machinists. So there's a large career field at Anderson Army Depot. Hiring freeze, only in critical missions. Okay, temporary appointments. You gotta learn to understand when you go to USA Jobs, you're gonna see three types of hiring processes. Permanent, when you go to position availability, you're gonna see temporary and you're gonna see term. The ter temporary position is just as it says here, fill a short term position not to expect it last more than one year. Commonly involves intermittent or seasonal work. Good job, a lot of college students, high school students come out there and work seasonal and do their job. It may be extended, um, some of the big things are is that you can't promote or into a, a career permanent or conditional status. So once you're temporary, you're a temporary employee. You actually have to leave, then come back and reapply later to become a permanent employee in a different job. This job does not allow you to transfer from one to the other. Uh, benefits, you get annual leave and sick leave with this and health benefits after 90 days. Even though you're not a permanent employee, you're still going to get some health benefits, which is a good thing with everything going on. The downfall, you don't get life insurance, you don't get a retirement plan. So, term appointments. Good for one year, up to four years. It can be extended based on the project or whatever you're doing. Benefits, you do get the annual, all of it. You get annual and sick leave, health benefits, life insurance, and retirement. It's almost as if you're a permanent employee. The only downfall is you can't, once again, go into a career conditional or permanent status. At, at the end of your contract, it's done, it's gone, you go home. To come back as a permanent employee, once again, you have to reapply for that job. And this one can be extended up to four years past. So ultimately, you could do eight years as a term employee. Any veterans in here? I'll make it real quick for you. If you do have a veteran that's prior service, the VA will help them under the non-paid non work experience where that individual could come out there and work for you and the VA will pay them a subsistence or a stipend to work. So it does, it's no cost to the employer. Like here at the library, you could bring a veteran in, have them work in the library and have the VA help pay for them. So it's a good work program and doesn't cost you a penny. Pathways, this is critical here. It's used for high school students and grads. 
high school grads, college grads. Um, there's multiple programs, internships. We went through earlier with them. I'll show you as we go through it. But as a college grad, while you're going through college, you can go do internship programs, part-time, full-time, seasonal. That allows you to make a little bit of money, but also build experience as you get ready for your next progression. Um, down there at Aniston, Miss Marilyn Futrell is our Pathways Program Coordinator. So if you need to contact, you can contact her, and she can give you a, a little more in-depth into that. But on USA Jobs, there's also a portion that shows you how to go into Pathways programs and internships. Vacancies, postings, recent grads, entry level, we just talked about that one. Some of the search keywords when you go into USA Jobs. These slides are actually in your um, packets too. I made them into one slide deck, but you have them in two in your packets. Vacancy announcements, once we get into USA Jobs, you'll get a better understanding of this, which talks about the announcement number. The open period, you gotta pay attention because most jobs are open anywhere from two days to about three weeks. The ones that are two days, if you don't apply with it, or if you don't catch it in that two-day window, you lost the opportunity for that job. Those that are open for three weeks gives you a little more time, but you gotta be cautious because time will move by faster than you think it does. And the closing date will be there and you'll be like, oh no, I gotta do all this work. Uh, the series code, numer numerical code identifying type of position, I'll actually show you something once we get done here that breaks it down by government code by job positions or job descriptions. So you can actually start looking by that series number. Grade, that's your salary levels, all the way from GS3 to GS15, and then you can go SCS, which are executive senior levels. And who may be considered? Everybody's considered. We found out this morning that um, there's jobs out there for U.S. citizens and non-U.S. citizens. So under the federal government, you can have both working for um, you. Uh, writing your federal resume, it's a tedious process, I will tell you that. You have to sit down and start taking all your stuff that you've done and start putting it into a format that's user-friendly for USA Jobs or for anything else. I know most people teach a one-page resume. USA Jobs, as it talks here, three to six is the average. I've seen ones at three pages, and I've seen ones at 18 pages, and we're talking about a resume. So, but the intent is try not to go past 10, but three to six is comfortable. It all depends on your experience. Also list your paid or unpaid experience. If you volunteer, ensure that you list that on your resume, because that's a plus for you with a lot of companies, because a lot of companies like to do outreach programs, volunteer time downtown or whatever. It's something to be good on there. Any questions? Am I going too fast? We good? Okay. Writing a federal resume. Explain the duties you performed. Um, me as an e e uh, EEO specialist, my jobs are handle complaints, which cover the nine protected categories, which are race, religion, color, sex, or national origin, disability, age, um, reprisal, and so on. So when I write my resume, I need to make sure I annotate those in my resume for the job I'm applying for, if I'm applying for an EEO specialist job. So you have to make it relevant to the job you're applying for. If you've done multiple jobs, the only thing they wanna see is what job you are currently applying for, what your training or relevance to that job is. Um, explain the knowledge, skills, abilities that you employ to perform those duties. You're adept at public speaking, Large, leading large and small groups of discussion. You gotta make sure you make it, put it in there. Like we talked earlier with the class before, was that if you don't put the key phrases, keywords, or relevant information to that job description, when it goes through the computer to be processed in USA Jobs, it will be disqualified or thrown out. You won't make it to the referral process. So you have to ensure that you get the key words and phrases in there. And please, when you see the job description or if you see a position description, by chance you get your hand on it, do not co cut and copy or copy and paste because when they start reading it and start looking at it, they're gonna realize that's all you did. You need to make sure it's in your phrases or in your wording when you write your resume. And federal versus corporate resumes, as I said, a corporate resume is one to two pages, two pages being max. Federal resume, you can go anywhere from three to 10 pages, three to six, as I said here, 
three to ten. Um, it just depends on how much information you got to put on there. Someone that has a 20-year work experience at multiple jobs may have multiple listings, which creates more pages. And that's why you would get the longer listings. Um, this is an example of a corporate level. And this is a little more about the, the federal level, which you see a little more detail in the job description that you previously held. Once again, it talks about the extensive detail, three to six page limit, dates, hours, per work per week, salary, compensation, employee, and contact. Can I contact your employee? When you do a civilian resume or corporate resume, you don't put that in there where it says, contact my previous employer. You usually have your little um, contact list that you hand out. On the federal resume, it's actually, it actually lists on the resume itself. And once again, page two talks about a little bit more. On this page applications, it will ask for three things when you're in USA Jobs. As we get into USA Jobs, it'll be a little more, a little more explained or a little bit more clearer for you to understand what they're asking for. One is that when you go in there, create your account, when you apply for a job, it's gonna ask for your resume first, which you already have submitted or stored on your own USA Jobs site. Supplemental data, which could include your transcripts, could, uh, could include any type of training certificates that you have. And then number three, the final part of it is a questionnaire, which for me is the longest part of the whole process of applying for USA Jobs. Because it can range anywhere from 25 to 30, 40 questions based on the job that you're applying for. So it takes a little bit because you have sections in each section, you have to go through and answer the questions. And some of the questions are in almost a paragraph format per the question. And then the answers are like two to three sentences per answer. So you gotta go back and read them all. And it talks about like your KSAs, checking the status. Once we go into USA Jobs, it'll be a little more explained to you is you're able to check everything via email or you can go on the USA Jobs website and track where your resume is in the process. And something else we talked about when you're in here in this process is your emails, make sure it's a clean email. It ain't ghetto girl 15 at get gmail.com. That's not an email that you want to have on your resume. On your voicemail, you don't want to go, hey, Bob, leave a message. You want it to be a professional. This is, or please leave a message. So you got to be kind of professional once you start this process and take some of the other stuff out. Army Contracting Command Internships, that's what we talked about in the pathways. Internship programs, um, individuals, it gives you some of the requirements, training intensive classroom. Mentoring, you go in as a GS-7, which a base salaries are right around about thirty to $40,000, depending on locality pay. A year there, you get moved to GS-9, which moves you up about $10,000. And a year later, you're a GS-11, which is another $10,000 increase. So basically, in a two-year process, you can do a $20,000 pay increase and be qualified for the job. So it's OJT is what internships basically create is while you're working it, you're getting paid, getting the experience, and then you're qualified and certified to execute as a purchasing agent or whatever this job was for. So it's a good program. Same thing with the summer internships where you can work in the summer, winter, evenings, whatever. And here in Jacksonville, there are also government offices. So you could probably find a job here or internship in Jacksonville if you don't want to drive down to Anniston. Um, they do have requirements, like this one here says 32 credit hours in business. Some of them will have a requirement of a two-year degree. Some require a four-year degree, depending on the internship that you're looking at. Some of the internships are for graduates, those that are pursuing their graduate degrees. So you got to take a look at everything when you start reading it. Here's some helpful websites for you to go look through. Um, we were just looking through some other ones. USA Jobs is one. Look at LinkedIn. Use LinkedIn. Start establishing your account, building your profile on LinkedIn because you can start to network with other students, those that have graduated that have LinkedIn accounts, and start learning about the other systems, other jobs out there. Um, talking back there to Miss um, Petaway, we talked about, or and even Miss Turner was, individuals that have gotten jobs in certain career fields 
have come back here and let them know that, hey, I have a job opening in this career field. We have anybody that's qualified. Do you know of anybody that's looking? We can take them and maybe get them hired out there. So LinkedIn, using the alumni source resources here can help promote and give students jobs. Now we can go to the application process, USA Jobs Application Manager. Let's see here. I'm going to take you into my USA Jobs account and actually do it step by step versus using the slides because it does give you a little bit better here. The thing is when you come to USA Jobs home, home, or home site or home webpage, you have two options, sign in or create an account. I already have an account, um, but if you don't have one, you need to go up there and create your account and it'll take you through the process. Um, I'll show you this page, how you start your process. Email, remember what I said about having a professional email. I have one just for USA Jobs or looking for jobs. That way everything goes to it. Then I have one for all my junk emails. That way I can keep this separate and I can keep track of all the application statuses and any new jobs that come out. But do your primary email and your username and you're just gonna go in there and I agree, create my account. But since I already have one, it's easier for me to show you how to do it actively than show you on some slides. Okay. Okay. Now I'm logged in. Let's see. Yeah. Am I? Oh, hang on. There I am. Now we're in. As you see on the top bar, you have options up here. Search jobs, teaches you how to do the basic searches. My account, which is all about my information that I have on my USA jobs. I actually will show you through my profile to show you how to start to develop your account and make sure you get it done. Understand that you can go in and just do the initial first page, create your account, get your account name, your email, and then come back later and do everything else. And just build your profile as you have time to build your profiles. And the resource center talks about all the other things and abilities that you have or access points. Um, prior, primarily one of them was we talked about pathways. You can come in here and find internships or find recent graduate jobs. And it goes to like we talked about graduates. Uh, the internships, we'll go to that first link and show you some of the jobs out there. Um, economist, student trainee, these are starting salaries all the way up to 75 and now, mind you, some of these jobs are internships. Some of them require that bachelor's degree, and maybe some of them require a graduate degree also. Um, this one right here, prime example, NIH intern, has US citizens, non-US citizens, citizens, nationals, or legal permanent residents. So that one right there tells me that almost everybody can apply for this one job. It is a purchasing agent for here. But the starting salary as an intern, and like I said, some of these internships are summertime, seasonal, permanent, temporary, and some of them are 120 days, some of them are 180 days. So each internship varies depending on where it's at and how, where, what you're doing with it. And as you can see here, there's 121 jobs or internships listed on USA Jobs right now that they can go through, which is five pages. This morning when we did our class, it was 120, so they've added one in the last hour. So it is constantly updated for you. Let's go back to the resource center. And then recent grads, it's pretty simple. It's the same thing and it gives all the information. When you go in here, I didn't do another one, but the job description and it starts to tell you everything about what the requirements are. Remember I told you about position information? Look, to, look for this, full-time recent graduates. Some of them will say full-time permanent, full-time temporary, full-time term, and some of them will have no longer than a year, no longer than two years, depending on the, the term or temporary. And some of them will be just short-term positions, 180 days or whatever it may be. And as you go through, you'll scan and it tells you all the requirements. Travel, that's something else you gotta be prepared for when applying for USA jobs. Some of the jobs require you to travel. Business travel may be 5% up to 25%. Some of them I've seen at 50%, depending on the job that you're applying for. It does talk about your duties and then 
educational requirements. You got to read this because some people get in there, oh, I'm good, I'm qualified for this job. And they go processing through it and they get to the questionnaire and like, oh, I don't have that piece. I'm not qualified. You got to read the whole job description out. As you can see, this one has a pretty lengthy process. Professional engineering. So it's a graduate program. Whoever, it's a graduate individual for this job. So any questions on that? Yes. Yes, you actually you create your account. Anybody can create an account. You don't have to be a federal employee or anything. You can create one, go in there like I showed you, go to the create account, create your own account, and then fill your profile in. And you can research as we'll go into it. I'll show you, you can search by job title, by salary title, by location title, um, anything. The parameters are yours to set and how you want to look for this. But if you just want to browse the position, you don't have to have an account. Yeah. Okay, you can go in there and just say USA Jobs and look for jobs. And it'll show you on the home page. Um, prime example is right here, US, United States Capitol Police. This is, they're looking for positions, but everything down here on the bottom, Customs and Border Protection, they have job openings. A Navy Civilian Opportunity waits you in Phoenix. So the front page shows you openings right there too, but you also, yeah, to, to get all the data, yeah, you need to create an account, which doesn't cost you anything, so why not do it? And all you do is just collect the emails and see what's open and where it's open. So, okay. Any questions on that? No. Nope. Um, my profile, when you do create your account, you're gonna have to go through and fill all this data in, which is basic address, your telephone number, contact. You can have two email accounts. But remember, when you set the first primary, that's the permanent one. That's gonna be your primary email. The secondary one, will be what picks up if something happens to your primary. So ensure when you open it, you have an email account that you want all these emails coming to. The one that you're gonna check consistently because you need to check it on a daily status because it could be you were referred, you've been selected. Um, I've seen people get selected for jobs without an interview. So you need to pay attention to your emails and your phone and that can happen. So. Make sure it's an active email account and one that you're going to actively check. Um, key points here, are you a U.S. citizen? Okay, if you answer no, it may take you a different path. If the job, some jobs require citizenship, some jobs do not. So it will restrict what you do get to see and don't get to see if you say yes or no. I am a veteran of the armed services, so a lot of these questions here are pertaining to me because I am a veteran. As you go down, like all males have to register for selective service. Are you a veteran armed forces? Yes, I am. Do you claim preferences? Um, have I, did I serve three years or more? Yes, I did. Give my dates for my service and so on. And then all the documentation to validate my service is added here. Now that only applies to me because I'm a veteran. For anyone here that isn't a veteran, you won't even see some of these pages here. And then also come down to number four, have you or ever been a federal civilian employee? Are you currently employee? And so on. I am currently a civilian federal employee. So I mark yes on here. And this is where I actually work at. Department of Defense, Department of the Army, and Army Tank Automotive and Armament Command out of Michigan is who my higher headquarters is or my boss. Um, the VRA, Veterans Recruitment Appointment. Yes, because I'm a veteran. Now we talked about occupational series. My occupational series 0260 equal employment opportunity is just related to me. There are series all the way from 0, 100 up to the 3,000 to 4,000. I'll show you the table, but it does break it down by just each one so you can see. And then we have the pay grades that you are. And basically with some more questions here, are you willing to travel? Like I told you, a lot of the government jobs are asking for five, most of them are say 5% travel. So you have to be willing to do it. But also you can set your parameters for search for all permanent, temporary, or all the way down. So you have a lot of parameters to be able to set jobs. College students, you have your seasonal, summer, intermittent, based on your class schedule. So you can look for jobs, shift work, part-time, job share, 
Then it asks, are you willing to locate? Some jobs require you to locate, relocate. Like me, I lived in North Carolina. Now I'm living in Alabama. And Miss Garlic was from California. Now she's living in Alabama. So you do deploy or do change address with the government sometimes. <laughs> um, please select your desired work locations. But the reason I work here now is because one of my locations that I set as jobs was Alabama. I said Ohio, North Carolina, and Alabama as places that I wanted to go work. Actually, I had a whole lot more. Now it's just these three because I had Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, um, Virginia, so and Louisiana. So you can set the parameters as many states as you want and just keep looking for the jobs. Uh, and this is basic demographic information, race, age, or sex, any type of injuries or disabilities. Even though you mark it here, it does not discriminate against you as far as applying for jobs. Okay, It just lets them know if you are a disabled individual or have a disability. And then pretty much the front page of that. I'll go back to my account. Um, we'll go step by step through some of the pages and accesses in here. Resumes. You have two ways of doing your resumes on USA Jobs. One is to use the uploadable format, which I have done, which allows me to store five versions of my resume on the website. All these are Word documents that I store in here. So I'd go back and change one as I need to for each specific job. Um, related, most of my field is EEO or EO and Sharp or SARC, sexual assault world. So I have my resumes vary depending on the job that I applied for. Um, the other option is, is that you can use um, USA Jobs Resume Builder, which allows you to save two jobs in resume in the USA Jobs um, site. Um, you go in, you start typing your resume, and you can complete it, whatever it is. It does its own format for you, and then you can save it. And you can save up to two in that profile. The only issue is that make sure when you start typing your resume in there, it will time you out. So if you type a paragraph, please save it. Type a paragraph, save. Because if you go through and type everything and it times you out, you just lost everything you typed. So you need to, as step-by-step, step, save your progress. Because if you don't save the progress, then you have to go back and redo it all again. So please take care, caution when putting it in there. Um, it's pretty simple. If you have the document on your desktop, It'll go in here and it'll tell you how to upload your documents and save them as you need to. And we'll go more into my individual documents afterwards. Okay, a save searches. And this is where we talked about my save searches. You come to this site, I can create a new save search based on many parameters. Um, what I did was by location and then I did by salary. I had a, a minimal and a maximal salary that I looked at, a window that I set mine at. So, I went to the salary and selected my salary anywhere from, let's say, 50,000. And then I went up to, let's say, 124. And that's good. I saved that one. But I can go in here and look in location by city, state, or count, or country. I can work a job here in Anniston. I can work a job in Washington or look for jobs in Washington. I can look for jobs in Kuwait, Afghanistan, Europe. Because wherever there's a U.S. government employee, you can look for jobs there. And almost every continent, we have government employees there in some form or fashion. So you could go, I mean, I could go into Kuwait. Let's see. Oops. I can set in Kuwait. Kuwait City or Kuwait itself. Because there are government employees, government employees all the way throughout the country of Kuwait. You can go by department or agency. We have FEMA right down the street. You have Department of Homeland Security right down the street. Um, you have Department of Justice in Aniston, Birmingham, Atlanta. So the parameters, you can pick the agency. If you want to work for a specific agency, you can type it in here, and that's the only jobs that will come up for you. Like I said, mine was very broad. I picked the state, and I picked the salary range. I didn't go by job type or anything. I just picked that and looked at jobs. Type of work schedule, posting options, and so on. So any questions on that? Inbox, I currently have nothing in my inbox. Um, I actually had any job that, or any emails or replies that you get will come back to this inbox. But also, all that will, traffic will go to your email account on your, your cell phone or whatever. 
it will actually go to your email. So you'll have it two. I can come here and check it, or I can check it on my phone. So it gives you the opportunity to do both. I did have a job in here earlier, actually one for Equal Employment Opportunity Specialist. It closes tonight in Huntsville, but earlier we worked it out. So um, here, any job that I picked and looked at and said I want to keep it, um, it actually gives me the option to save that job. Well, I saved that job, and it'll show up here. And I actually, let me go back a little bit, and I can show you what I'm talking about. Here, internship. And this portion here, I pick up the job I got, I found it. I can come over here and do a couple multiple things. is apply online, print preview, or save the job. If I save that job, that's where it goes into that folder. It says job saved. And then I'll have it for later dates to come and look at it. Like this job here is open from November 9th to November 18th. So I have till the 18th to apply for this job. So, or I can share this job with anybody else. If I have a friend or something, I can, it gets emailed to them. So in that category, that's how, we, how it works as far as save jobs. Save documents. Talked about this. This is all the documents that you'll upload. I can upload to 10 documents on this website and store them. Uh, critical ones, my job at EEO or Sharp, all, the cert all my certificates for those are stored right here. My college transcripts are stored right there. Cover letters, if you want cover letters, you use them. Um, because I am a veteran, I have my DD-214, SF-15, and other preference letters, have to, which I have to submit because I'm claiming veteran's preference, are all on here. So all I have to do is apply and start uploading, click on these documents to upload them to my application process. I have eight on here. You can store up to 10 documents on this website. Um, cover letters is a hit and miss. Some people like them, some people don't. Some people prefer just to leave them alone because usually what they do is get the resume and they read the resume. They don't read the cover letters. So um, I have them on here, but I haven't sent them out with every job. I've only sent them out like three times and it wasn't for the job I got hired for. So. And then the next thing is application status. And we can come in here and each job that I've applied for or processed will tell me what its status is. Like this job here in Huntsville, which is the one we did this morning, my application is incomplete. I haven't submitted that application. I went through the whole process, but I didn't submit that application. And I'll actually, I'll try to walk you through one real quick before we leave with all the questions and stuff. Um, here's another one I applied for back in June. They received my application, which means USA Jobs received it. It didn't get referred because at that time that actual job posting got pulled and changed and republished at a later date. I didn't reapply for it. Um, same thing here with the EEO specialist. Like I said, you need to read everything on that job description because when I started doing the questionnaire, I'm not in the reserves, so I couldn't do the job. So my application list, listed as incomplete. Uh, sexual assault response coordinator. This job I applied for in April of this year. I was referred, which means I made it through the computer process, got referred, but I wasn't selected or selected for interview. I just got, I made it through the computer program to get referred to the job. Basically is what it came out to be. Um, here was an example we played around with, a GS-13 EEO specialist, very high up, wasn't quite qualified yet for it. I need a little more experience to get to that level. As you can see, application disqualify for lack of experience. So if you don't qualify, they will let you know too. <laughs> um, like you see a lot of them here, I was, the applications were received, not referred. Um, and actuality, where is it at? Is it on this page? It got moved to the next page. Hmm. Okay. Not selected, EEO specialist. Hang on a second. I'm trying to look for one that shows you. Where did mine go? Must be on the second page now. It got moved. There it is. This is the current job that I am in right now, which is an EEO specialist, Anderson, Alabama, and it shows selected. So it will tell you, and not, I'm going to tell you too, not all times will USA Jobs get updated because USA Jobs to be updated means that the CPAC office, the Human Resources office, has to send the information back to USA Jobs to update it. As you see here, they actually did and it shows that I was selected for this job that I'm currently doing. Yes, ma'am. This here? 
It all depends on the CPAC. Um, if you like, if I apply for the job today, it'll tell me tonight or tomorrow morning that my application was received. Um, it may take a couple of days. The thing with government jobs, it could be, and I'm going to tell you the, the short side, three months. The long side could be up to six months before you find anything out. It is a very long process with government. Yeah, USA Jobs will send you the emails. It lets you know where your application is, whether it received, referred, not referred, whatever. Um, and as you can look here, look at the dates. The close date was March 4th. I was selected, applied, or got accepted 29 July. That was a four and a half month window between from the date I applied for it till I was actually hired. So, and that was kind of quick in some aspects. So you don't, do not be impatient when you're using this process and start months out. If you're a senior and you're three months out from graduation, start throwing resumes out there on the US and federal jobs because it may take three months before you even get a phone call for an interview. So that way when you do graduate, you have the opportunity. It's not gonna be walk in today, tomorrow you're hired. Um, I mean, a lot of people would love it, but it's just the process takes time and it has to be vetted. So like for my job, it required a background check. So there was multiple things that had to be done to get me into it, which adds time to each job. Okay, so as you can see, yeah, multiple jobs I've applied for, and there's a not selected, reviewed, was one down here, um, received, received. So, a lot of it is is you have to be cautious of the, of the opening days because if it's open for two days, sometimes that means that there's they have something planned or it's internal, or whatever, and they're going to get a quick hire. So you have to pay, like I said, go in daily, and check. Or have your like when you do. Um, I'm sorry. Let's go back here. Save searches. And when you do your searches, I, mean, I like to go back and make this here, is that you may look at how often you want to receive the updates. Me, for the three searches I get, I get daily emails on it. You can do it weekly, you can do it daily, or you can do it monthly. The problem with doing it weekly is if it's only open for two or three days, you're, not, you're, you're going to miss the posting time. So it's almost good to just daily get emails on what jobs you're looking at or what areas because if you wait that weekly, you're going to miss some jobs. So, and see that down here on the bottom, it gives you day. I'm sorry, I do weekly now because I'm not looking for a job. I'm just trying to gather emails or, or job op opportunities. But you can go daily, monthly, daily, weekly, monthly, or never. My advice is if you're lo progressively looking or actively looking, do it daily. That way you can see and you make sure you make, meet the windows of opening and closings. Okay, I think we're going to have to go and I'm going to apply for one. Let's see. Mm, let's go back. Let's go back to resources and we'll try that. What we're going to do is we're going to go through the internship program and go into the questionnaire so I can show you step by step as we apply for a job. Um, for doing a regular job or even internship, the process for this is all the same. I'm going to come over. This is a job I want to apply for. I think I'm well qualified for it. So I'm going to come over, apply online. Okay. Now it comes down. This is what you're going to see. Please, if you are submitting or updating a previous application, you must resubmit all required documents. I'm not updating it. I'm going to go in and start all new. Um, first thing, resume. Like I said, you have two variants to pull from. One from the resume builder or one from where, I up, where you uploaded. Me, I've uploaded. Granted, none of my resumes is max, but we're just going to pick one. Go with it. Attachments. Now, remember I said I was a veteran, so I need to make sure um, to get my veteran's preferences, I need to make sure all documents correlating to that are there. Um, if I have certificates to, re re relating to this internship, I need to make sure I upload my certificates because that's showing qualification and training in that program or area. Um, and any other events. Uh, transcripts, if your college transcripts, if your job is based on your college degree, make sure your transcripts are loaded up in there. So we do that. And then you come down here. I have previewed my resume, basically saying I understand. I made sure it's all correct, relevant. Allow me to attach my demographic information, which I, I showed you the one page. It talks about your mail, your race, and all your stuff. Right here, you're attaching it. You don't have to, 
but you can. I do it because I'm not hiding anything. You know who I am, so you know who I am. And then at, at the bottom, I certify to the best of my knowledge and belief all information is correct. And then you apply for the position. Now we're done with USA Jobs portion of it. That was pretty quick, right? Apply for a job took me all of what, two minutes? Now we're going to go to what we call the application manager on the back side of USA Jobs. And this is a questionnaire. And on the job description, as you scroll down, it's going to, you'll see a point that says view questionnaire. You can click on that. It's a link to the questions for that job. So you can go check the questionnaire and say, that relates to me. I'm good. I can answer these questions. So I can go ahead and go do the questionnaire. This one here is Department of Commerce. It's going to talk about personal information. As you see, it gives a list of information they're going to ask me as I go through the process. Please continue uh, the mandatory information. We're just going to put a birth date in here. Okay. First account creation, military service. Because this is a different format, it's taking me through a different process. But do you claim veterans preferences? Um, it's already got. It's already marked for me in here. I don't have to answer any of these other questions because I marked the top one already, so I'm clean here. If you answered what I was, oh, okay. And then it's also got my service dates in there. Talks about demographic, all that stuff's already in there for me because I did it in USA Jobs, built my profile. So it saves me time here. Okay, we're actually gonna do one of mine. Let's see, this is Robbins Air Force Base. Um, the closing date is the 16th. So we'll go through this process and actually do the questionnaire. Once again, my whole job description. I'll show you where I talked about the questionnaire. Talks about all my skills. Where's the questionnaire? How to apply. Okay, and right here, view occupational questionnaire. This questionnaire is all the questions that I'm gonna have to answer when I go to the second half of this application process. So what you can do is do a pre-read to ensure that you meet all qualifications before going through the process. It can save you a lot of time if you sit down and read that. Apply online. Once again, we'll go back through all this process. Sorry about that. And we're doing that. Now we're going into the questionnaire. This is application manager. You're out of USA Jobs, now you're in this process with the USA Staffing Office. In actuality, if you get hired, you'll actually go back into this and do all your paperwork to be hired also. So this is one of the ways that HR CPAC gets all your information because you'll have questionnaires for you to fill out once you're hired. Biographic data, which we talked about, my basic address, email, and am I a U.S. citizen? All this is pre-filled because of my profile, so I don't have to fill any of this in. The lowest grade is because of the job description. If it's a GS-11 job, it's going to list it here. If it's a GS-12 job, it's going to list it right here. So that's automatically filled in. All this, veterans preference, and all this is all pre-filled in because of what I did earlier in my profile. I'm not a transition assistance plan, so I'm not transferring from one to the other, or I could say I am because I am a, a, a employee now of the government. It, it will vary from job to job. Um, for me, when I moved from North Carolina down to here, I was told, because um, I'm a new hire, a first time hire, I didn't get the relocation. Now, Ms. from Ms. Garlic, because she's been a federal employee for a while, they paid for her move from California to here. So they do give out incentives. I got paid travel money to come, but I didn't get paid to move my house, per se. Yeah. yeah. I'll go show you back on one of the job descriptions. Actually, in your, if you open your folders, you got three job descriptions in the back right-hand side. And if you read down where it says, talks about travel, that PCS piece is also in there. It tells you where the PCS is authorized or not. Permanent change of station. Yeah. It, no, it, not very, not not necessarily. Um, like for me, because I didn't accept the the travel or the the PCS move because I'm a first hire, I can actually apply for a new job and move without costing because the government didn't pay to move me. Now, for Miss Garlic, she has a suspense that she must stay in station for, I think it's a year. And that's the thing is that it's, they've worked very well with you in, in compensating you for the moving. So if you work for the government, yeah, they're going to help you move. So, 
Um, this page here talks about employment availability. Remember what we talked about? How available are you? Can you do seasonal work? Can you do intermittent work? Me, 40 hours per week. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, now this is critical here. We started getting to the 18 questions for this. Please accurately identify your level of experience and demonstrate a cap capability when completing this questionnaire. There's gonna be some points as we go through. I have to answer some questions and I'll tell you, there's things that you need to make sure you are key on or follow. Um, I am currently assigned to Robbins Air Force Base. No, I'm not currently assigned to, I'm not currently an Air Force employee. So as you need, you need to read each question and ensure that you answer it because people have been disqualified for answering the first couple sections of this questionnaire because they didn't put down proper answers or whatever. So you gotta pay attention. I am a current permanent Air Force DCIPS employee. No, I'm a DOD transfer excluding Air Force. Now, if I was to do this, am I considered a DOD transfer? Yes. Non-DOD transfers, because I'm not a non-DOD, no. Reinstatement, I was formerly employed by a, as a federal civilian and permanent competitive appointment in the competitive service, no, because I'm currently employed, so I'm not a reinstatement. PPP, registered military spouse, I am a registered in the DOD priority placement program for the military. As soldiers move, the government tries to help the spouses, and that's what this program does. Yes or no, I am not because I'm not the spouse looking for the job. Appointment of certain military spouses. And this talks about PCS and other things and ratings and so on and so on. I'm not gonna read the whole paragraph for you because I'm not the spouse applying, it doesn't apply to me. I am a disabled veteran who retired from active duty military service rating of 30% more. That applies to me, so yes. I am a disabled veteran and this all this talking to me here for the VRA is that I did three years of honorable service. I retired, so I did my three plus. So I could use the VRA as an appointment for me. The VEOA, I am a veteran discharged or released after completing three or more years also. So I can fall under VRA or VEOA as a veteran. Family members, executive order. If you decide to take an employment overseas or your husband's overseas and you're an employee with the GS or the government, and he gets orders or she gets orders to come back, you can use this to help you find a job or get relocated to a job. That's all this doing. I was employed overseas as an appropriated fund employee while a family member of a federal civilian employee, NAF, or family member of a uniformed service member officially assigned to an overseas area. All this does is help you get into a job when you walk onto that new installation or new duty station. So no, I'm not here. Non-appropriated, Funds or AFES, which is Army Air Force Exchange, the PX or, or the stores for us. I'm currently serving on a non-appropriated or Army Air Force Exchange. No. Other OPMI interchange agreement, office, an OPM is Office of Personnel Management for us. I am currently on a permanent position, which is equivalent to at least a grade level of the position or higher of the federal service. Actually, yes because I'm a GS-11 with that one. People with disabilities, I have a physical or mental dis impairment. Now understand, you have veterans that are disabled and then you have individuals that are disability with impairments. Not every individual has a, is a people with disability. So understand, make sure you read this because it could be minor things that create you, uh, you have a disability that could qualify you. I have a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major act life activities. If you respond yes to the statement, you must submit a certifi certification statement from a state vocational rehabilitation service. So if I say I got, I'm got missing a limb, that's where this falls into the category. Or I am blind in one eye, or I am deaf. That's where you this goes into the category. I have to have validation or certi certification saying that I am. No, I am not. I am retired from federal service and receiving an annuity. No, I am not. Even though I am a Retiree, I'm not a federal retiree. So understand, as soldiers, I'm not a, a federal retiree yet. I can still retire from the federal service later. Interagency Transition Assistance Program. If you are eligible, Interagency Career Transition Assistance Program, ITAP, 
applicant, you may apply for a special selection over any, any other candidates for this position. All that means is that if we have a GS employer or a current Army or current federal employee, they can come in and receive special needs or special rights for that job. They can actually bump me as a veteran off out of that job because they're already an employee in the system. So it gives you the right to, like, Ms. Garlic moves from location to location or I move location to location. Because I'm already here, if they have a new hire wants to hire in, I can bump that new hire out. Now, section three, this section is used to determine if your current performance rating is acceptable for further consideration. All applicants must read the following statement and select the most appropriate response. All current federal employees must have a minimum performance rating of acceptable or higher to be considered a placement. And basically just saying where you fit in your categories right now. Are you a excella, excellent, or are you exceller? Excel at what you're doing, or you're mid-level, or you're low range? And preferably, if you're applying for a job that you're one that has excelled. An acceptable rating will say. This section will be used to determine your ability to will and willingness to accept certain conditions of employment or meet, and meet certain requirements of the position. I am able and willing to perform temporary duty at locations other than my permanent duty station, which may include travel by military or commercial flights. Work occasionally requires travel away from the normal, normal uh, Normal duty station, including overseas. Like I told you, you have to be prepared to travel. And that's the big issue is a lot of people think, well, I'm going to go higher. It's 5%. I ain't got to travel. It won't happen to me. You get there, hey, we need you to go somewhere. You say no, they may move you to another job. So, like I said, make sure you read the job description. If it says travel, make sure you're willing to do the travel that's required. So, yes, for that one. Section two will be used to determine if, if you possess the minimum qualification requirements needed to qualify for the position. Failure to respond to this question will result in an ineligible rating. So here in this category, A, B, C, D, A is your best rating. D is I really don't meet the criteria for this job. So if you're going to mark D, I need to ask you, you need to ask yourself why you're applying. Really, that's what it comes down to. I have at least one year of a specialized experience equivalent to at least a GS-9 processing, EEO, and military equal opportunity cases. I have that. I got four years experience in the Army and six months here. So that gives me the requirements for that one. For each task in the following group, choose a statement from the list below that describes your experience and or training. Okay, now we're going to talk about specialized training in the career field or this job field. Conduct special review of alleged discrimination as determined appropriate and as directed. A is your minimal. In this category, E will be your excellent. So it's opposite of what we just did a minute ago. So if you're marking A, you might want to question, am I really qualified for the job? And what it is is conduct special review of alleged discrimination as determined appropriate and as directed. For me, I perform or have performed this task. So I mark excellent. Advises on procedures concerning preparation, development, submission of complaints, and alleged discrimination. That's what I currently do. Develops comprehensive mediation agreement based on input from the parties involved and ensures all appropriate parties review and sign agreements. Excellent. Ability to interpret and adapt guidelines to many situations were not covered by guidelines due to vagueness or conflict of guidelines. And then what we do with EEO is the same thing every day. So yes, I consider myself excellent. Now, let's see if it here, it won't do it for me. But most times when you have this, when you mark excellence on them, it'll have a little block in the bottom. And it will ask for what position on your resume gives you relevance to be excellent in this answering this question. Um, like my job as a deputy program manager for e Equal Opportunity and Sharp actually gives me my experiences and what I currently do. Serves as a consultant to operating officials, chaplains, judge advocates, human resource personnel. I work with all of them. Explains impact of program changes to complement status to managers, supervisors, employees, and the service organizations. Um, it varies. Preferably, you want to mark E. We're going to mark D just to change it up a little bit. Ensures information disseminated is thorough, accurate, and based on sound EO personnel process and sound EO and personnel policies. I do my job, I read the regulations, 
I, I consider myself very proficient. Performs follow-up on all agreements to ensure parties therein maintain terms of each agreement. I perform, I perform this task as a regular part of my duties. It's part of my job. Okay. There we go. Section five. Gathers data, utilizes, distributes written surveys, analyzes data, conducts personal interviews or focus groups, formulates written assessments, reports, and provides recommendations. Do it every day. As you see, this is very monotonous. It's a lot of reading, and you got to read. I've done it a couple of times, so I already know A, B, and C I'm not going to mark most times. If I'm applying for the job, I'm already thinking I'm D and E qualified. So I really don't want to read A, B, and C because if I'm having to say that, then I need to go back and say I'm not here. Okay, complete comprehensive documents, correspondence, and other documents that comply with relevant agencies, command and installation regulation policies and directives. So to speed this up, as all the questions you see are very related to the job I'm doing, we're going to mark E. Section six, provides technical assistance, advice, and recommendations to commander, manager, supervisor, military members, and employees. Okay. Now, as you saw, we went through the whole assessment. There was 18 questions referenced this job. The one we did this morning had, I think, 35 questions. So each job is different on how many questions it asks and how you, how you answer and how you do it. Um, most times with the E, you're going to be required to validate why you gave yourself an E. So just remember that as you're doing it. Now, number, this is the final section of it. Failure to agree or respond to the statement below will disqualify you from further consideration for the position. Select the most appropriate response. Make sure you read because people have marked no, and what's that do? You're disqualified already. You kicked yourself out of the system. Yes, I verify that all my responses to the questionnaire are true and accurate. I accept that if my supporting documentation and or later steps in the selection process do not support one or more of my responses to the questionnaire, that my application may be rated lower and or may be removed from the further consideration. That GS-13 job I applied for, it was well above my pay grade. As you saw it come back disqualified for lack of experience. So that's what will happen. Here we're going to say, yes, we're good. Okay, now it's going to come into the documents, reuse documents or any documents I have. These are the documents right here that we uploaded just earlier. So it's just telling me that. The next page will give me the opportunity to upload any documents that I may have missed or don't have in USA Jobs. I can go on my computer or whatever and pull them in and add them to this list right here. And that's all this is going to do for you right here. And the final page, this is where you end it. If I click this button, I've just applied for this job. It's, already, it's out there. I don't get to go back and change it. But I can go, if the job closed on the 12th and today is the 9th, I can go back in tomorrow, Saturday, or Sunday and add any documentation that I may have forgotten. As long as I do it before that closing date. I have to do it before midnight Eastern time on the 12th. And if I don't want to do it right now, if I don't want to submit this, I just close this brow browser, or the browser, and I can come back later and submit my application. So it gives you the option. I can submit or I can come back later. So if you're not real comfortable, uh, I may come back later and I may think some things through. Yeah, I'm good. I'll, I'll submit it. If not, I just may take it out of the process. And the key point here, too, is when you get a chance to see the view print, if you go in there, all the questions I just answered are right here. So either save this to your desktop or print it out and save it in a folder because every question you answered is right here. And if, you have a que if you're doing multiple jobs, you may want to have a copy of this. So if you get a phone call or email saying, we want to look at you, you may want to go pull this questionnaire out and remember what questions you answered and how you answered them. And it takes you all the way down through question 18. Like I said, I did, I did one that had 35 questions, and that's a lot of questions. So here we are. We're done. Since we're not going to do it, we're just going to close the browser out. And it actually, it will stay, this will stay in my USA jobs. It's in there. This job and the one from Huntsville are actually all completed, ready to be submitted. Now tonight, the one for Huntsville closes, it'll actually just push it off this side and delete it because I didn't apply in time. Um, I told you I'd go back and show you 
the handbook of occupational groups and families. Well, actually, we'll go back. Any questions on the questionnaire? The questionnaire, like I said, is the most time consuming out of the whole process, besides writing your resume. Okay, and the government employee system, our series work as many. As you see here, 0000, which covers all the way up to 99, are miscellaneous occupation groups, correctional institution administration series, foreign law specialist, the 0100 series of social science, psychology, and welfare. What's your major? Education? Okay. The 0200 cover human resources. 0300s cover general administrative clerical office service groups. 0400 is natural resources management biological services. The 0500 is accounting. 600, all my medical. Now these are government jobs that are out there. 0700, we even have veterinary, veterinarians under the government. Engineering, architecture, legal, information and arts, business, copyright, physical sciences, library. <laughs> but we have a bunch. Mathematical, equipment facilities and services, education, right there, the 1700 series. There are actually DOD schools. We have DOD schools. Department of Defense on most military installations have schools, and we have teachers. They are some, most of them are government employees. So, and they actually make a little bit better money than the teachers on the outside. I will tell you that too. So, inspection, investigation, quality assurance, supply, transportation, IT, communication world. And so then it goes into the explanations of all the other processes. So as you can see, there are a lot of jobs out there that relate to the government. So pending any questions? Um, if you have any questions, um, I can be reached at, who is it? I'm sorry, I still learned my area code. Or is it, yeah, 256-235-6201 is my office phone number. For those of you in class, you have my card. Any questions, you can contact me. My email address is david.m.crossen.civ at mail.mil. I'll say it again, david.m.crossen.civ at mail.mil. And thank you for your attendance.